Kia ora. My name is Julia Rose and I'm the Partnerships Manager at the Christchurch Foundation. At the Foundation, we're all about determining and enabling activities that can help our community thrive. So now more than ever, we need to be having enlightened conversations that could help us figure out how to emerge from this lockdown. Given that COVID-19 is likely to be a factor in our lives for quite some time, we're going to ask a series of questions to some of the thought leaders in our city. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing you to Saran Dixon. Welcome, Saran. Hi, Julia. Thanks for having me. It's lovely to have you here. Uh, Saran sits on the board of the South Canterbury DHB. She was the founder of Diversity Role Models, and she's now the director of Flipside Consulting, which facilitates tricky conversations around topics like bullying or diversity and inclusion. And throughout her career, she's always been interested in how we encourage positive social change. So my question for you is that in some ways, the women of Christchurch will be more affected um, by the lockdown than men. What can you tell us about how plans for the recovery of our community should factor in some of these issues facing women? Well, that is a complex question to answer in a short space of time, but I will give it a shot. Um, you're right, there are uh, inequities being faced um, by women and actually uh, ethnic minority people as well across the board. I don't think we'll be truly aware of what these inequities are for some time to come, but nature has certainly presented us with an opportunity to do a kind of stock take, if you like, or an audit uh, environmentally and across all sorts of uh, inequality areas. So my my key thinking around this is that we can't just be wishy-washy and say it's unfair and unequal, is that we need to analyse the data. We need to understand what is happening in terms of unemployment, what's happening in terms of the part-time workforce. We already know that there's a 12% pay gap between part-time workers and full-time workers, and that women make up more of the part-time workforce. So understanding the statistics once uh, they're released from MSD, uh, we know that, uh, you know, in the US who've released their uh, data a bit more quickly, that 60% um, of the jobs that were eliminated in March were women's jobs. So we need to know what's happening across that uh, level of society in New Zealand and more broadly in Christchurch. Um, I also feel that businesses need to take this opportunity to do a kind of stock take themselves. Who did they let go of? Whose hours did they reduce? Some of the clients I've spoken to have had to make very rapid decisions and with rapid decision making comes a whole load of bias. And some of the diversity work that's been done over 10, 15 years has been undone by this rapid decision making. I think some Unconsciously, I think some people feel that their male workers are probably going to be more able to complete their job descriptions because they're very aware that the majority of the domestic and childcare lies with women. So um, subconsciously, they're potentially giving more of those roles or keeping men's roles in place. Um, and that leads me on to my third area of data analysis, and that is on a micro sort of personal level, is understanding what happens in our homes when it comes to domestic unpaid labour. Uh, anecdotally, from everything I'm seeing, it would appear that most of what's happening around homeschooling and running the home is falling to women. Um, in my mind, there are two grown-up grown human beings who live in a house who produce children together. That responsibility should be 50-50. Both people work, so I have no understanding as to why suddenly it's the women who are printing out all the lessons for the children and emailing the teacher and organising the food when they have jobs to do. So we won't see a uh, greater equity around this until we, until we start to challenge what happens in our own homes. We won't see women more able to take on leadership roles and make decisions which um, favour all people, um, not just the sort of privileged few. Um, until we manage to release women from some of those binds, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And I particularly love your idea that let's not make wishy-washy assumptions. Let's look at the real data before we comment on it. So mm. I appreciate that. No, no worries. It's, it's, it's important, isn't it? And I think once you've got your data, you understand your strengths and weaknesses. Um, you know, the other thing I wanted to mention, of course, would be around um, family violence. And we do have some data on that. And that's around, um, you know, 20% increase in reports of family violence. But if you can imagine how few people would be able to actually have the freedom to report that violence, um, those numbers are going to be far, far greater. So um, part of the bigger picture here is that we need to be working holistically across the board, raising our boys and girls 
with the emotional intelligence to process difficult emotions. Um, all of us are struggling with emotion at the moment, but um, you know, uh, sort of using violence to deal with that is not an answer. Um, so a lot of women are facing that, and some men, of course, as well. Thank you, Saran. I know you've got some incredible insights on um, how we can raise our boys and girls uh, to change some of these patterns. Where can people find out more? Uh, yes, you can go to my website, which is um, flipsideconsult.org, um, or drop me an email on saran at flipsideconsult.org. Great. Thank you so much for your time today. No problem.